Well, 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 to absolutely nobody's surprise, we're back again with yet another no fluff analysis. And this time I'll be going over the Gala Dragalia showcase that was, you know, announced a few days ago. It's going to be running from the 27th of March 2020 until the 2nd of April 2020. Anyway, let's get straight to it with the first, well, and the only unit added in the showcase, the five-star shadow sword, Gala Alex, the Liberated Assassin. Her skills are, well, complicated at first, let's go through them step by step. Her first skill is Crisis Edge, which deals three hits of damage to a target, reducing their defense by 5% for 15 seconds. This effect does not stack. Her second skill is Umbrella Erasure, dealing one hit of damage to a target and inflicting poison for 15 seconds. Using either of her skills activates Skill Chain, which means that you can repeat skills and it will have additional effects based on the skill you used before, and what the foe is afflicted with. A Crisis Edge after a Crisis Edge deals extra damage to enemies with Defense Down, but does not inflict Defense Down itself. An Umbral Erasure after an Umbral Erasure deals extra damage to enemies inflicted with Poison, but doesn't inflict Poison by itself. It's fairly simple. Alternating skills? that is to say, Crisis Edge into Umbral Erasure, or Umbral Erasure into Crisis Edge, has two possible conditions. Condition 1. If the enemy has a buff, the buff will be dispelled. And then we follow the chain bonus from before, so dealing bonus damage to enemies with defense down, or with poison. Condition 2. If the target is in break state, deal extra damage. These don't apply at the same time, and if they do, then Condition 1 takes priority, that is, buffs are dispelled before applying extra break damage. So there's three particular sort of chains that you'd want to go. Uh, in standard fights where nothing is really happening, you spam the same skill repeatedly to trigger the bonus damage off inflicting defense down or poison. If the enemy has a buff, for example Kayan's shield in the Yagato fight, then you alternate the skill once and then you start repeating it. So maybe use Umbral Edge and then you start spamming uh, Umbral Erasure and then start spamming Crisis Edge, or the other way around. The third condition is if the target is in break state. What you do is you pick a skill and then you repeatedly swap between the two skills. Obviously pick the first skill depending on which debuff your target is missing, or status affliction, so that's poison or defense down. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's talk co-abilities. In the most recent update, co-abilities have had an overhaul. You now only benefit from co-abilities from your own team composition. In multiplayer, even though you only bring in the lead member of a team, your benched member's co-abilities are those that will apply. You'll no longer depend on a strict multiplayer team composition for certain co-abilities. You simply do it yourself. If you need HP and defense co-abilities to survive a high dragon blast, while well, you put a lance and an axe on your bench. This also means that you don't need to worry about multiples of the same co-ability on multiplayer teams, since everyone customizes their own co-ability buffs. However, this does mean that you're going to want like a strict overview or strict uh, like team composition for each and every single unit you plan on bringing into multiplayer. So for example, what are my teams before? I had like Fjorm, Noel, uh, Vanessa, and then Nefaria, for example, for like different endgame High Dragon Trials or Kayan, for example. But now with the co-ability change and the chain co-abilities, I now want Nefaria with, I don't know, Delphi on the bench because he has a Poison Edge chain co-ability, for example. But I'll never actually use that Delphi. So uh, yeah, we have another new problem with team slots, but hey. Uh, overall, these changes are a power boost to basically everyone. Anyway, that being said, Gala Alex has the standard sword dragon haste co ability. Oh, yeah, so I mentioned chain co abilities, we also now have chain co abilities. Chain co abilities apply in a similar fashion to co abilities, but they stack instead of only taking the highest value. So I mentioned that Delphi had the poison edge chain co ability. Chain co-abilities are actually slightly unique. Um, they're not the same as your standard co-abilities, and they vary depending on the adventurer. There's some that give you bonus strength for being above 60% hit points, 
some for being below 40% hit points and then some more unique ones. For example, I believe Chelsea has one that grants you a shield when you fall below 40% hit points. That kind of thing. Anyway, Gala Alex has the Shadow, Poison equals user strength core ability, meaning that for herself and any other Shadow units on her team, for example if you put her on a bench, her strength is buffed or the lead unit's strength is buffed whenever she inflicts poison. In single player, chain core abilities are shared with all of your team members. As for her standard abilities, Gala Alex has reduced defense punisher, Guardian Shadow, which gives her full blindness and paralysis resist, and her third ability is Poisoned Punisher. All in all, Garnet Alex is a Shadow Sword powerhouse. She'll make Kayan easier to deal with due to having the spells ready for use at the drop of a hat, and she seems pretty tailored towards a poison centric composition. Think Lathna Delphi? Delphi, right? Nefaria? That kind of thing. There's more, I'm sure. But uh, another small thing to note is that Alex doesn't have the standard sword combo. The standard sword combo is like three strikes, the fourth one is a jump, and then the fifth one is another strike. Well, Gala Alex has like a stab into some slashes. There's no jump, which means that you actually stay mobile. If you haven't noticed, then actually using the force combo of a sword standing attack chain actually makes you jump into the air and you can't interrupt that jump with a dodge, so you actually become slightly immobile using that chain, but Alex doesn't have the same issue. Anyway, moving on to other stuff added with the update that's not strictly part of the Gala Showcase. We, as part of the uh, 1.5 Anniversary Awards, will be receiving the 5 star Shadow Dragon Mini Zodi, the Mini Slice of Awkward. I think his Japanese title is something like My Father, which is somewhat morbid, but hey, uh, story story spoilers. Uh, we're, we're, we're okay with spoilers here, right? Anyway, he grants shadow units, actually no, he grants all units plus 30% hit points and plus 30% strength. So he's the same as mini mids, essentially, which was granted the last time we had. Was it also a six month? I actually don't remember. Or was it one year? It's been a while, huh? Anyway, his skill is Jubilant Catastrophe, which deals one hit of damage to nearby enemies. It's nothing special. Alongside this, we also have Worm Prints added with the update. The first 5 star print is Memories of Youth, granting Striker's Strength and Shapeshift Prep. I definitely think it's an odd combination. Striker's Strength pushes you towards Wave Battle style content and Shapeshift Prep. And uh, shapeshift prep doesn't really see much use unless it's for a specific strategy, but with waves, battle style content, well, we are going to see the Fire Emblem Heroes collaboration event return, so it might be useful. As for the second print added with the update, we have the 5 star print, the Red Impulse, granting Dragon's Skill and Dragon's Claws. Dragon's Skill is a skill damage version of the Dragon's Claws buff, scaling skill damage with each transformation. At max unbind, each transformation grants plus 8% skill damage, capping at 24%. I feel like this could be used well by Lathna in the Expert Kayan and Agito fight, and possibly by other characters that charge their own dragon gauges with their skills. As with other Gala showcases, only Gala Alex is rate up, but the old Gala adventurers are also in the pool. But, however, notice they're not rate up, mate. You're just as likely to pull the old Gala adventurers as any other adventurer in the pool. Personally, I think I'm going to spend a small number of resources, but only because the Dragalia Digest announced that the Fire Emblem Heroes event and showcase would be making a return, along with a part 2 showcase with new limited units. Since I consider Gala units only partially limited, much like when Gala Luka was released, I'm more compelled to say for limited units. And seeing as the Fire Emblem Heroes return is going to be roughly a month from now, yeah, I'm going to hold on to some some sort of backup of resources. Either way, if you're a newer player with fewer 5 stars in their roster, then yeah, now's a good time to pull. You get much more return for your Wormite and or Diamantium if you happen to spend money on this game. And, well, your tickets as well. But for me, I'm going to keep some for the Fire Emblem Heroes Part 2 Showcase, seeing as I already have three adventurers in the Part 1 Showcase. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, stay safe, 
and I wish you luck in your upcoming polls.